What is music in the metaverse? How did you go into the metaverse? So, okay, right now our clients like Universal, uh, Warner, they are already experimenting with all these uh, platforms. Uh, uh, we've seen we've seen action in, in Fortnite, we've seen action in Roblox, with live concerts, mostly. Uh, we've seen Snoop Doggy Dog with Snoopverse uh, in the sandbox. We are currently uh, also experimenting with this with them. Uh, again, for us, it's just another touch point of usage and, and licensing of music. So it's always uh, a space which we need to be there and operate in order to administer the usage of the music and the licensing of the music. So I guess the issue is mostly with the creators and how they device, right? Yeah. What are the main problems that you have identified in the music industry that make you want to throw into the metaverse? So uh, there is something that we call in the industry the royalty chain. So from the moment that uh, copyright content is created, and, and then gets licensed in order to be monetized, there's a huge uh, chain of actions that are happening until the creator gets paid for that content. Uh, and that's, that's where we, we, we get in. Now, uh, there are a lot of issues in the sense of um, many times we don't know how royalties are calculated when there is usage in a specific platform, uh, either in, in, in a DSP platform or UGC platform. Sometimes the music is streamed, so we get paid on streamings mm -hmm. or on views on a video. It depends on the, on the business model that platforms have. So when you have a live concert in Fortnite or when you have something happening in, in the central land, it's really tricky to see how we're gonna calculate the usage of that license. We call a blanking deal, which means, okay, guys, we're gonna pay us this amount of money and we're not gonna do anything, or we're trying to track all the usage, whatever that means in a specific platform. And based on that usage, then we get into discussions on how much they will pay us for that usage. It's a very complicated concept, so we try yeah. to keep it on the surface. I think you need to spell it out a bit more for me. Yeah. <laughs> so what I gather is that you give a lot of uh, power to the creators, right? Yeah. So during the life cycle of a creation and artistic creation in the music industry, you give more control to the creator on who does what, who listens to their song, right? Yeah. And, and that's the tricky part because the music industry, uh, the way it's structured uh, legally, it's like 50 years old. It's, it, and they never managed to uh, keep up with the changes. So if you're an artist and, and you need to collect money for the usage of your content, you need to have a representative in your, let's say, local country. Then you need to have a representative in other countries that when your music is used. Mm -hmm. So similar to digital platforms. And that's where we go in. I mean, that's, that's where we enter to help them uh, collect or license their music in the digital space. Then, okay. then someone needs to be there because the artist can be there. So that, usually we do that through their record labels or their publishers. Okay, so that gives also some more transparency on who does what, who yeah. created what. Yeah. And how does this work with the big, um, let's say, uh, records, the big labels? Okay, we have two players in the game. It's yeah. the record labels, mm -hmm. which mostly represent the sound recording, the actual song, let's say. Then you have the publisher side, which represents the composers and the lyrics, which there gets more complicated. So usually the record labels are the ones that they are signing the deals with all these platforms, and then the publishers follow. Uh, is it covers? Is it answers the question? Yes. Uh, I just wanted to ask about the. You mentioned how the artist gets more um, um, power, more control, and if she wants, she can, he or she can control who listens to their song uh, outside the borders of the world internationally, so it creates more transparency in the whole life cycle of um, a song, uh, right? Okay, now it's something that they don't have. Mm -hmm. It's very difficult, but the metaverse gives this opportunity. It gives the opportunity to the creator to uh, facilitate the royalty chains by themselves, which means, uh, usually, you go to a record label so they can fund the creation of the music, promotion, etc. Now you can go 
uh, in an NFT market and try to raise money by creating an NFT. And that's how you're going to fund the creation of your music. And, and with this way, you can also uh, share royalties with the people that they're, let's say, buying that NFT. So in, in a way, you're giving the power to your fans mm -hmm. and they're supporting you uh, in creating your content and, and, and sharing it. And also administrating it through the blockchain because it's, it's easier to, it's more trackable. Okay, so just to make it even more simple because I'm, I'm not in the music industry. Okay. So let me think, I'm listening to a YouTube song, right? So one, I'm one of the one million listeners of the song. Then, I don't know, Ariana Grande or somebody will know that I listen to the song specifically and she can charge me for this uh, uh, one time or ten times I listen to the song? Uh, okay, in, in YouTube usually it goes to the person that uploaded the video. So mm -hmm. if you're listening to the music, we're not going to charge you, but usually the uploaded the video. So if that person uh, didn't license the usage of the music, then we go in and we claim that usage. So the artist gets a percentage of that. Okay, so there are opportunities for monetizing uh, your content and uh, new business models are created, right? Yes, there are. You have more direct access to your funds, so you can mm -hmm. do things with your funds. Uh, you can create uh, something we call the merge, which you can create uh, digital goods and okay. sell them directly to your fans. Uh, you can do live performances. I mean, the COVID was a huge, um, how to say, uh, event that created a, a big problem in the industry because the artists make most of their money from the live performances. And now with Metaverse, they can do performances digitally with their virtual character. So you're mini, you're saying with uh, VR, virtual reality? Either VR or through all these platforms that we have. I mean, you have Fortnite with Travis Scott doing a live performance. Then you have Ariana Grande or, or Justin Bieber doing things in, in Sandbox on Decentraland. So yeah, usually they're creating their virtual character. And if you are in this platform, you can attend and, and watch so all these So there are actually singers who have created a virtual self in the metaverse? Yes, and, but it's usually the big guys. Mm -hmm. And it will be interesting to see if someone that is unknown, he or she will be able to uh, make this change and everybody will take their attention towards there. At the end, it's just another community. And it's another mean of promoting uh, and sharing the content. Right now, we've seen all the big uh, artists in using the metaverse. Uh, we have a question there. Maybe yeah. you want to go. Right? I'm a bit confused. You spoke about transparency and about how creators can get more more power. Mm -hmm. You mentioned that your clients are like studios, like Universal. Um, how does that work hand in hand? Because I, I'm not in the music industry, and I just watch like go a ahead. Spotify documentary on Netflix, and it doesn't look like any company is actually giving power to the creators, and it, it's just like. What's what's different in what you're doing towards what's been happening in like the, the scene? Yeah, that's a very good question. Actually, the the Spotify uh, show is a very good example. The technology is going to give the, the, the film to the creator to have this transparency because right now there is no transparency uh, in a way. So by facilitating all this thing that we call the royalty chains. We're trying to create this transparency so the creators know why. why. Why am I getting so much money? Because there's so many intermediaries in between from the moment that someone gets paid and all that money will go down to the creator. So we are either going to do that through the metaverse, which is transparent in a way, uh, or by helping right now the record labels and the publishers to do it in a way that when we go back to the creator and they will say, okay, here you're gonna get like five dollars. They know why I'm getting five dollars because right now they don't know, and because there is a huge problem in the industry, they get it so slow. They get paid after months or years for usage of their music. Okay. So if I'm if I'm a musician and I make a song, uh, do I come to you and then ask you to negotiate on my behalf with the record label, or does the record label already work with you? And when, when I go to the record label, they will tell me you yeah. work with Orpheum and they will explain how you get paid. Yeah, yeah, we don't, we don't, we don't do the licensing okay. or the production. We just 
support the record labels or the publishers in order to administer your rights. So when you go to a record label and you sign with them, when they start uh, licensing your music, that's where we, we come in. Okay. In order to make sure that when your music is used, etc., we you're going to collect what you're supposed to. Thanks a lot. But Thanks. do you really need licensing if you have Metaverse? Yes. Why? Because uh, the owners of the music, they need to get paid. They created something. It's so a copyright. Cannot you do like micropayments, like I create my own content, I got my IP, and then, I don't know, would it work like that? That's how the industry works right now. That's what I said, that legally they are so behind. Mm -hmm. uh, and, but it depends. If you're an individual creator, that you create your own content, and you do that through NFTs, then you can do it by yourself. So it's actually, what you're saying is that the legal framework is keeping us behind and uh, yeah. necessitating the, the middleman so yeah. far. Yeah, and the middleman. And also, uh, the copyright ownership is so different in different countries, in different layers, in different uh, usage of the music. So it's a very complex uh, system. Mm -hmm. I but want yeah, with Metaverse, you just, yeah, you just replace the whole thing. Oh, but you need, have the cons, huh? <laughs> you need to have the community to monetize that. I, I want to go back to the fact when you said about fan engagement and uh -huh. NFTs. So when you go to the metaverse, I guess this creates a whole meta experience of music. It's not just listening to a song, right? It's all the, the things that you can do afterwards. Yeah. So can you tell me more about this? Well, there are many ways that you can interact with your fans. Actually, there was a very interesting uh, project called the Budweiser, Budweiser uh, Royalty with a digital celebrity called Bunny G. So what these guys did, they uh, choose 20 uh, artists, like new artists, and they created a royalty scheme for that. So uh, you can go in and you can uh, opt into this NFT program. And if these artists become popular and famous in the future, you're going to uh, get a percentage of that reality, which means every time their music is licensed or used, even in Metaverse, you're going to get uh, something out of it, like an investment. So you can also make your own uh, fans, investors in your uh, music. Something that is right now owned by the record labels and the publishers. Okay. Okay, so this is more like in the a digital uh, individual experience, right? Yeah. That I can have after uh, I listen to a song. Yeah. Okay. What are the, some other common tactics that um, you know of? Okay, so we have the investment part. Um, we have like VR concerts, like Alpha. Okay. The What's that? Uh, they created a virtual reality concert. The real yeah, ABBA? The yeah, the yeah. real ABBA. The real ABBA are virtual reality. It's really cool because they just created a. Yeah. Okay. Um, so how does it work? Like a silent disco? I wear my goggles and... You have, it's a VR. You get your VR and you can uh, see their live uh, And you can In experience my room. like being there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's one thing. Uh, when I go in a, in a VR concert, do I see the other people dancing around me? It depends on which platform you are. But okay. yeah, that's, that's the whole thing, that you're sharing something with others. So you're sharing experience with other people. And you can... Uh, consume the content of your favorite artists. Amazing, because uh, it's, it's like a very weird experience when you go to a silent disco and there's no music. I get the same as with a VR concept. You go and then you don't see anything and then it's, you it's invent different. the world, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's different, yeah. Um, I, th I think with Warner, what they did, they created um, uh, venues, I think in, in uh, Sandbox for live performances. Mm -hmm. uh, we also work with um, Warner in Roblox, which is another gaming platform. So again, it's it's mostly live performances in all these platforms. Okay. Um, yeah, we just support them with that. So that's very progressive uh, of ABBA because they are you know an old yeah, group. We were all surprised. <laughs> yeah. Are there any contemporary artists who have invested in the metaverse? Uh, well. I was at the music, I, I don't know, but yeah, we've seen a lot. Uh, one very interesting um, thing that we've seen is the uh, Kingship uh, band, mm -hmm. which is the uh, uh, board apps, Yacht, 
Okay. So, yeah, so Universal, the record label, uh, signed deal with them. So they created a bank with the board gaps. Yeah. We haven't seen anything yet, but there's already a, a huge trend about it. So they created... Um, so in the board apes? Yeah, they took the board apes, they, they signed a record label deal with them. They created a band with characters, uh, with advertisement and goods and everything, but we haven't seen any music coming out. But Because why not? Why not? Yeah, why not? Look, look at the end, it's a trend, okay? It's a trend. Mm -hmm. There's attention to this trend, and people are trying to monetize it. Okay, so I uh, guess what I see is that this is creates like, uh, so many opportunities, and you have to find like what is your target. How yeah. do you not get lost? Like, where do you want to go exactly? It's, it's difficult. It's like any other type of promotion for an artist, even if in, in metaverse or not in metaverse. Mm -hmm. So if you want to do something in sandbox or decentralized, you need to go there and, and learn how to do that. You need to learn and use their tools. Uh, so it, it's up to you to decide where you want to be and how you're going to promote your music. I mean, the technology is out there now. You need to do a lot of work too. Uh, community to create traction. Yeah. What do you see the big uh, labels? The big record labels. Or well, now they are mostly uh, interested in live performances, mm -hmm. and they're also getting into um, creating like a virtual goods, in a way which they can sell to fans, mostly through NFT. Um, we've seen Beatboard. Uh, charts and create some, uh, again, digital goods based on charts. Uh, but they're still over experimenting with all these platforms. They're so new, uh, the accessibility is kind of niche in a way. Not everybody knows and accesses this platform, mm -hmm. but the community that already is using them is huge. So they're trying to see, okay, how can also be part of that community uh, through our content? Because music is everywhere. And one of the interesting things about music is that there is this, uh, let's say, something we call the, the usability, very play. Yeah. I mean, okay, you're going to read the book one, two, three times. You're going to watch your favorite movie three, four times. But music, you're going to be listening that all the time, again and again and again. It's, it's so different uh, content to be consumed. And this is a huge opportunity for the specific industry that it's always there, everything that comes up, they're always the first to go in. Does anybody have any questions? Does it make sense what of I'm course talking about? Yeah. Uh, you want to make? Sure. Yeah. Join us. So um, I'm, I'm just wondering, uh, I, I myself use uh, MetaQuest 2, so I'm, I'm just wondering, is there like uh, an app that one can watch uh, virtual concerts, or are we just talking about 360 concerts, video just so, shot in 360 somewhere in the crowd and that is it? And it's basically, because I guess everyone does it, I, I just put Ariana Grande live shows all the time and mm -hmm. I'm just in my room listening on my TV and watching the show. Is that the same experience in VR? Should I think more of like Beat Saber situations or what exactly, where do you come in? Is uh, okay, so it's not always VR, okay? But I mean, Fourth Night, all these platforms, you just go on a desktop uh, and you just enter that thing. Okay. Uh, and that's how you experience it uh, in a way. But, uh, um, yeah, again, it's usually the, the, the big actors that they create, there's a huge effort to create that live performance, not just getting the actors on the stage. They need to create the opportunity to go out there and perform. So it's, it's a huge effort. So honestly, I don't know if someone that has uh, know how to say financial support, how they will do that. Unless they spend a lot of time in learning and doing anything uh, by themselves, because you can do it by yourself if you know the technology. I mean, that's a good part of it, but it's really tough. Yeah, yeah. I guess I could build a concert in Minecraft and, and yeah. <laughs> yeah, actually, that's really cool. I'm doing a live concert in Minecraft really crushed there. I guess it's the question is about making things more accessible to everybody. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. It's, uh, we always think about ourselves but as a subject but it's about creating accessible access yeah. to everybody who might not be able to uh, yeah and uh, i would say that the biggest challenge now with these two platforms 
Uh, is the accessibility to that technology. There are different technologies, so if you want to be in both platforms, you have to learn both platforms. You need to create content for both platforms. It creates complexity and effort and time. So you need to pick your battles. And on the other way around, I would say, uh, for me as a consumer, it makes it more accessible, so I can watch ABBA from my living room. But on the other hand, as an investor, it makes it creates a new business model, so I can invest in a new creator, right, through Metaverse. Yeah. Well, that, that's the cool part, that you can also have a part of the royalties of the content. Mm -hmm. I mean, again, during the COVID period, because the artists didn't have the opportunity to go and perform live, they were selling their catalogs. So they were selling their rights, especially the big ones. The catalog is the, is the rights of uh, the music to be used and licensed. So uh, they were selling that. But right now, I mean, if you do that through an NFT, which means anyone can join in, obtain, and have part of your royalties. Okay. Yeah. Um, we have time for one more question, I guess. Does anybody have any more questions? No, then I'm going to ask one last one. Yeah. Um, Okay, music in the metaverse and a new product. How easy is it to find, or hard is it to find talent in this domain? Well, that's, that's something we call A&R in the industry. And it's something that we're currently not really uh, operating, uh, but we're always, uh, let's say in a way, interested in collecting data of usage. So uh, it's a really, really tough uh, space. Uh, I would say right now is mostly managed by the people that they're analyzing the data. I mean, based on data, we can do that. We can find talent, but based on data. Mm -hmm. But at the end, it's uh, like the 520 people and all these, these companies that say, okay, you are going to be the next uh, beeper or you're going to be the next uh, XYZ artist. But uh, because everything now is digitally, we can get the data and read the data and propose ideas of who might be the next one. Okay. But we, we can't really just decide at the end. So any, um, I, I, from what I gather, there are so many opportunities there. New investment opportunities, new monetization opportunities, but also yeah. new ways of giving control to the creators of music. Uh, it's the only, the, the question is, you have to be very fast, right? Because uh, the industry seems to be very yeah. Uh, yeah. quick in adjusting to these things. Yeah. And, and I think the basic concept of metaverse is the centralization of power, mm -hmm. which means you have the power to create your own content. You have the power to promote, distribute, and monetize your own content. But it's always difficult and it, it needs effort. That's why usually you go to a record label and you, you start uh, promoting and creating content. But the good thing is now, yes, you can do that by yourself. We'll see if we're going to have any, any stars that they did that uh, through all this platform. And that's what we were waiting for, actually, because this will uh, inspire more people to do it. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you.